I am Julia Fielding. I'm a professor of radiology at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. I specialize in urology and gynecology. I actually started out though as a professional ballerina, which is a little bit unusual for a physician. My parents were show people. I was raised to do that. So wow. then it turned out that I wasn't going to be any taller. <laughs> so I could be thinner but not taller. So I decided to go back to college and I uh, became a physician after that. Um, I was always attracted to radiology because of its visual nature. And then, of course, it's become at the forefront of almost everything in medicine because it's no longer reading films in a box. It's now making the diagnosis mm -hmm. for many, many patients. We have replaced the physical examination in many areas, and certainly for general surveillance, particularly of the ovarian, gynecologic, other types of cancers, CT is often now the forefront. At present, I'm just finishing up a fantastic project, which is a book titled Gynecologic Imaging. Uh, based solely on that, but including all modalities, uh, ultrasound, plain film, CT, and MRI. Uh, also, I had to hit up all of my friends. The best people in the country <laughs> have been asked to do a chapter in this book, in each of this book. I also looked around and I thought, in the mornings, after a difficult night on call, I would check and see which whether books were still open, basically, on uh, the residents' work tables. And they are still using books. I've had many, many requests for a book solely on gynecology. So this is a book focused just on that. So I really believe it should be one of the four or five solid textbooks that are still going to be in your office or on your bookcase at your work. Fewer people are interested in women's health than should be. Good. And so I have worked my entire life to, in women's health. And I have lectured around the world and collected tremendous amounts of cases, data, friends, colleagues who are excellent in this area. And I thought this was a real chance to serve too. I am fortunately a well-known lecturer, particularly in gynecology, here at the RSNA and many other lectures, and I was approached by the uh, editor, editing group at Elsevier to do a book solely in gynecology. I had thought about it in the past, but my chairman and many other people told me Elsevier was by far the most reliable publishing group to work with. They were uh, very successful in the medical text field and they knew how to market. So I was assigned uh, one editor. Uh, we initially had quite a long meeting where we uh, decided what the chapter would be, how it would be laid out. I had specific requirements for the book that I felt would be most useful for referring physicians, and they were very helpful in making sure that that happened. There was a terrific online system for sending both images and text back and forth between authors, editors, and the Elsevier Publishing Office, and they were also very prompt in returning all of my phone calls and all of my questions from my authors. It's always hard to say what's over the next horizon. Um, it's possible. I, I will always work in women's health. Um, I might contribute to a couple of more books that I kind of have considering, um, again, in the women's health area. I'll be lecturing around the world and hopefully uh, bringing my book with me to other parts of the world to um, not sell the book, but let people know, especially in these countries which have minimal women's rights and minimal women's health care, that it's out there. The book, the professor, and all of that work is there for them. I think one of the areas that's uh, very important is one, the resurgence of ultrasound. Ultrasound has an, has an underused test in many ways. It's inexpensive, all you need is a plug to really turn on the machine. And so when I have a resident or fellow who's going to another country, particularly in South America, Asia, or Africa, I always tell them that's the one machine to buy. You can use it for obstetrics, you can use it for abscess drainage, you can use it for many other things. And now there's a new area of uh, tensor imaging where the flexibility or density of the tumor can be assessed and um, the value of the chemotherapy determined. Other ways uh, this can be accomplished now are uh, using subtraction imaging with contrast in CT and also with what's called diffusion weighted imaging in MR. So all of these are areas that here at the RSNA I've seen several um, publications and also some um, very good scientific presentations on and so over the next couple of years we'll have to see how these pan out.